Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you love Jesus one more time, however you do that? Come on, however you do that. Praise God. So thankful to be here tonight. Appreciate the pastor and first lady and you good folks for being here and have my wife with me, my son, daughter-in-law, grandson. I got my mom. Um, you know, and it's just so hard. It's not disrespect, you know, not to call him dad, uh, but I, I feel like he is. I love him so much, and we're just honored for Roger being here. And so, praise God. We're so glad to uh, be here tonight. Amen. A lot of prayer has been made over this service tonight and, and over your meeting, and I pray the blessing of the Lord has been upon this place for the last few days, the last few meetings, and I am confident that it will continue to flow in this place tonight. So I want to say amen to that. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I just, I, I, I want to preach tonight if the Holy Ghost will help me. Amen. Praise God. How many of you know we need the glory of the Lord? We need the glory of the Lord. You can be seated just for a moment. How many of you know we need the glory of the Lord? My wife, about a oh, year, two years ago, they found a spot on her breast, and they wanted her to come back in, and they was going to do a biopsy on that spot. And we got to praying, and we said, Lord, no biopsy, no cancer, no issue. We went back in, and they was going to do the scan to um, do the biopsy, and when they went back in, there was no lump there, no spot there, no nothing. They asked her to come back a, a few months later, and they was going to do another scan and make sure everything was okay, and we just done that not very long ago. And when we went and she did that scan, and they said that it was so good, she didn't even have to do the ultrasound, that she can go back to her normal checkups. We have miracles happening at Solid Rock Church. I know you have miracles happening right here at Church on the Rock. Uh, just recently, the uh, testimony of Brody and, and what happened there when they went to the specialist and that his bones are back to normal. I mean, we are seeing miracles happen, and we are seeing prayers being answered. And if you're not a part of that, amen, I'm just telling you, you need to jump in because God is moving and he's working in this moment. He's answering prayers. Someone say amen. Praise God. Hey, we, Brother Green, he just was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and we were praying. No chemo, no radiation. And long story short, God touched his body. He went back just this past week to get a checkup on his, with his urologist. And they said he was at a negative. I mean, it just, it, it, it's. So I'm telling you, we're seeing miracles. We're seeing miracles. You're, how many of you have had a miracle in your life? A miracle in your life. We know God is working. But yet we need the glory of the Lord. We have miracles happening. We're seeing signs, but yet we still need the glory of the Lord to be in the house. So I want to say amen to that. How many of you would testify with me tonight that, Lord, we want your glory? Moses cried out, Lord, show me your glory. I mean, after everything that he went through, I mean, you think about the Red Sea, the manna, amen, the water out of the rock, and yet he cried out, Lord, show me your glory. I would pray that there would be a heart in us tonight that says, God, I want your glory. I want to see your glory. I think it was Paul that said, oh, that I may know him in the fellowship of his suffering, that I may be a part of his resurrection, that I may know him. We need the glory of the Lord. And so I want to draw your attention tonight to 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 1. And you can stand now for the reading of the word just out of respect to the word of God. So the word that I bring to you tonight, um, if we declare that we need the glory of the Lord, it might be a word of correction, if that's all right, and that's never easy, and I believe it's going to be a word of hope for us tonight, so I want to say amen to that. Can you handle that kind of word tonight? All right, praise God. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 1, if you have it, say praise the Lord. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying... The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. 
and the priests could not enter in because into the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their face to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And everyone say amen. amen. Sweet Holy Ghost, I ask you to anoint me tonight. Let my mind be clear. Let every word come out of my mouth be full of life tonight. I ask you, Lord, to speak to this great church. Speak to the people tonight. Give them ears to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. Now, Lord, I, I got to stand. I can't stand here by myself tonight. I need to stand in your authority and your power. And I ask you to anoint me to preach this word tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And every believer say amen. Can you give him one more shout of praise before you're seated? Someone say amen. You may be seated here. You may be seated. When we talk about the glory of the Lord, we're not talking about good church or goose dead or running or dancing, and I'm for every bit of that. But when we see the glory of the Lord move in the scripture, amen, it brought about a spirit of humility and humbleness before the Lord. And I just want to read this to you. It's in Exodus 24 and verse 16. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days, and seven days he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight and the sight of the glory of the Lord was devouring, was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. What you're going to find that's pretty interesting in the scripture is that the, the, the glory and fire go together. They go together. When Solomon prayed, the fire fell and then the glory filled the house. Whenever we read the scripture here in the book of Exodus, we see that there was fire and glory. It, it comes together. When you think about the word fire, you're going to be thinking about something that purges, something that consumes. The Bible said that our God is a consuming fire. And so may I say to you tonight, before that we ever see the glory of the Lord, I believe the fire of God is going to hit the house first. And I just declare to you tonight that the fire of God is coming. It is coming. Now, like I said, we are seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. We are seeing pe people being water baptized, people filled with the Holy Ghost, and I give God praise for that. But we have yet to see the glory. But before the glory comes, the fire is going to fall. And when the fire falls, we're going to see the glory of the Lord. How many of you would, would agree with Pastor or testify with me tonight that there's things in our life that we need the fire to hit? There's things in me that I need the fire of God to hit. There's attitudes in us that we need the fire of God to hit. Amen. And I'm just telling you, amen, if we're going to see the glory, you're going to see the fire first. And there's things in all of us tonight that we say, Lord, let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. In Exodus chapter 40 and verse 30, 34, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Somebody say the glory filled the tabernacle. I thank God for a church and a pastor that wants the glory of the Lord. And I, that's one thing I can say about Pastor True and other ministers that are in this place. Amen. Is that we want to see the glory of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for the number. We thank God for a good church service. But we are not satisfied until we see the glory of the Lord fill the house. Oh, glory. And I, I want to reiterate tonight that before we see the glory, we're going to see the fire fall. There's going to be a purging. There's going to be a cleansing. And when we get that fire, we're going to see the glory of the Lord fill the house. Oh, come on, give him a shout of praise tonight. Give, eh. The Bible said that Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The man of God was not able to enter into the tabernacle because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. The praise singers couldn't sing their praises, couldn't play the instruments. We couldn't have church as normal. The, re the routine had been disrupted. Why? Because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 11, it says, So the priest 
could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Someone say amen to that. When the glory of God hits and when the glory of God comes, the show's going to stop. The performance is going to stop. We're going to move from the spotlight to Him getting the spotlight. We're going to move from us getting the glory to God getting the glory. Somewhere we're going to draw our attentions off men and we're going to begin to draw our attention to the one that matters the most. Someone say amen. Oh, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me ask you something tonight. Would it be okay with you not to be seen? Would it be okay with you not to be recognized? Now don't just say amen. You look in your heart tonight. Would it be all right not to be seen and not to be recognized? Would it be all right with you if we simply abided under the shadow of the Almighty? That we simply abided under the shadow of the Almighty. And we forgot about this preacher, this prophet. We forgot about this person and that singer and that gift. And all of a sudden we got consumed with him and who he is. Somebody give him a shout of praise tonight. Somebody give him a shout of praise tonight. I'm telling you I'm not prophesying I'm just telling you by the authority of the word of God the glory of God is coming back to the house of God I said the glory of God is coming back to the house of God now we may lose some superstars we may lose some people who love the spotlight but if you're going to have the glory it can't be about you it's got to be about him I dare you to give God a shout of praise come on give him a shout of praise Someone say amen. The glory is coming. It's got to come. Somebody say the glory is coming. I wish it would come tonight. Wouldn't it be wonderful to come tonight and this remnant of, uh, of, this remnant of people and, and you got a preacher that you don't even know, a no-name preacher, a no-name preacher, amen, and all of a sudden somehow the wind of the Spirit of God begin to blow and the glory of the Lord fill. Someone say glory. Now let me show you something. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. In 2 Chronicles 5.13, it gives us an ingredient for the glory of the Lord. And it came even to pass as the trumpeteers and singers were as one to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. When they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. When the people were in one mind, in one accord, when it wasn't me stepping out or you stepping out, but we blended together as one and we was praising God as one. Our mind was connected. Our heart was connected. It wasn't about us. It wasn't about me. It was about Him. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the ministers could not minister because the glory of the Lord filled the house. Let me ask you something. How often would you continue to come if you couldn't sing? How often would you continue to visit if you, you weren't able to preach or you wasn't able to teach? How often would you continue to come if you had to abide in the shadow and somebody else got the glory, but it wasn't a man that got the glory. It was him that got the glory. Someone say amen. I'm telling you, oneness is an ingredient for the glory of the Lord. He said in Acts chapter 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they all with one accord in one place. Somebody say one accord. They were in one accord in one place, in one mind, in one spirit. It wasn't about, uh, uh, it wasn't about a group. It wasn't about a name. It wasn't about a personality. It was about God. It was about seeking God. And they were in one mind and one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Oh, wouldn't it be beautiful, 
on this Thursday night for the glory of the Lord to fill the house. If you want the glory, will you throw your hands up and begin to praise him? Will you say, God, let tonight be the night. Let tonight be the Let tonight. Let tonight be the night that the glory comes. We're tired of the program. We're tired of the, of the superstars. We're tired. We're tired. Oh, God, we got to have your glory. Come on, put your hands together and give him a shout of praise. Unity is essential for the glory of the Lord. That's why a spirit of division has hit the house of God. That's why a spirit of division has hit the house of God. Because he knows there can be no glory if there is division. Be very careful of a spirit of division that tries to get on you and devour the church and devour the singers and devour the man of God. And all of a sudden we devour this when the Bible said take heed lest you devour one another. I'm telling you this is an hour, amen, to keep our spirit right, our heart right, our mind right, and we keep our mouth shut and we simply stay humble before God. Why? We need His glory. We need the glory of God. Hey, if church was doing it, it would already been done. It would already been done. If our three songs in a sermon would do it, it would already been done. I tell you, it's high time that somebody said, you know what? We need the glory of the Lord. I dare you to give him a shout of praise. Come on, I dare you. Somebody help the pastor. Give, give, give God a shout of praise. Give, give. better watch that spirit of division it'll, it'll kill revival it'll stop the glory of God from coming that's why we gotta be in one mind please please hear me tonight the Bible said to prefer one another before yourself we gotta come in humble we gotta come in in the, in the shadow of the almighty it's gotta be about Jesus it's gotta be about him it's got to... someone say amen watch this watch this watch this God is not gonna give me the glory He's going to give us the glory. He's not going to give you the glory. He's going to give us the glory. Jesus' prayer. Here's, watch his prayer. Watch his prayer. That they all may be one. His high priest prayer. That's Jesus praying. That, 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 that they may be one. As thou, Father, in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Watch and the glory, somebody say the glory. glory, the glory, which thou gavest me, I give them that they may be one even as we are one. Oneness and unity is connected to the glory of God. And that's why the spirit of division has come. It's trying to divide us. It's trying to divide the church. Why? He knows there can be no glory if we're divided. But I'm in a house tonight that we've made up our mind that we're going to be in one mind and one accord. Why? We need the glory. Somebody shout, we need the glory. We need the glory. He says, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard of Aaron's head and went down the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mounts of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Why? Because there was unity. We were together in one mind and one accord. Someone say amen. I said someone say amen. Let me show you something interesting. Let me just show you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, this is Solomon's prayer. Now when Solomon made an end of praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. And the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Solomon experienced the glory of the Lord. But when he died, his son Rehoboam became king. And, and the Bible teaches us that the kingdom divided that the tribe of Judah and Benjamin stayed with Rehoboam. And the other ten tribes went with Jeroboam. Now if you read your Bible, there was never any mention of glory in Rehoboam's church or Jeroboam's church. 
You find the glory mentioned with Solomon, but you never find it with Je uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Why? Because there was a divided house. There was a divided house. Are you hearing me? Amen. And because there was a divided house, there's no mention of the glory. I cannot stress to you enough tonight. The Holy Ghost told me to come and preach to you tonight. That if we're going to have glory, we got to be unified. If we're going to see the glory, we got to be unified. We got to be in. Someone say amen. Rehoboam gathered 180,000 warriors to fight against Jeroboam. He said, I'm going after them 10 tribes and I'm bringing them back. And in 1 Kings 12, 24, thus saith the Lord, you shall not go up nor fight against your brother, the children of Israel. Hello, somebody. They will never, there will never be any glory if we fight one another. If the church fights one another, there will never be any glory. There will never be any glory if the saints are fighting one another. There will never be any glory if the saints are fighting against the pulpit. There will be, no, 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 no. We are brothers and we cannot fight. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There will never be any glory if we hate one another. There will never be any glory if we're jealous of one another. If we don't walk together and we don't agree... Amen. And we don't and, and we don't agree together. We can still be brothers. We don't have to see eyeball to eyeball to be brothers. I don't have to be in your camp to be your brother. I don't have to shout to your beat to be your brother. We can be different and we can be separate and still be uh. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? Watch Jeroboam. Watch this. And Jeroboam said in his heart. This is the man that had the ten tribes that broke away. Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall, their heart, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So here's what he's saying. He said, man, I'm afraid that all these people are going to leave me and they're going to go back, amen, to, to the house of worship and where the house of God is and, and I'm going to lose my people. That's what he was saying. He said, I'm afraid they're going back to Rehoboam. Now watch what he says. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Watch. And he set one in Bethel and the other one he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. You know what happened with Jeroboam here? And please pull up here. Is that he got into competitive worship. His worship was designed to keep the people not to attract the glory. I'm going to say that again. Jeroboam got into competitive worship and his worship was designed to, to entertain the people and keep the people and not entertain God. Now may I say to you, we are in uh, extreme danger. Amen. When we're more interested in pleasing the people than we are the presence of God. He said we got to have a bigger program than Rehoboam. We gotta, we gotta sing better. We gotta have bigger lights. We gotta have louder music. We gotta, we gotta outperform them. We gotta have a better church. We have a better church over here. You may have all that, but you ain't got no glory. You know why? Because you ain't after the presence. You're after the crowd, not the cloud. You're after the crowd and not the. That there cannot be competition in the church. There cannot be competition in our preaching. There cannot be competition in our singing. We cannot compare this church with another church. Amen. If God, listen, let, let, let me tell you what the Holy Ghost said when I was praying. He said we need secret miracles. When Jesus performed miracles, he said, shh, tell no man. We need secret miracles. What do you mean secret miracles? Well, we quit using that as a trophy to try to let everybody else know that God is here at Solid Rock Church or God is here at church. We're using it as a trophy. No, we need some secret miracles. Where God is moving, we're not advertising, we're not promoting, we're just saying, God, let your glory be in the house. Let your glory be... Let... Uh, uh, 
Can I get a witness tonight? I said, can, can you give God a shout of praise tonight? Can, can, can you? How about you stand and give God a shout of praise? And... I'm going to give you a word. This is, I'm telling you, this is a word from the Holy Ghost. There is not a ministry that we need a pattern after. I don't need a pattern after Jake's, Furtick, you name them. Because if there was glory there, but we're trying to pattern after something that doesn't, if there was glory, it would be working. Let me ask you something. I wonder how many people would show up if they would move Hillsong out. I wonder, what, I, wonder how many, I wonder how their church would do if they didn't have elevation worship. I wonder how many people would come if it was just some no-name preacher and just some people that say, you know what, we gather not to be entertained, but we are after the glory of... You may not have heard this, but you're going to hear it tonight. He will not share his glory with nobody. He will share his... Give him a shout of praise tonight. Give God a shout of praise. Give, 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 give God a shout of praise. You may be seated. You may be seated. When you look at Saul's ministry, the glory of the Lord departed from, from Saul. And you find him becoming a javelin thrower. He's throwing javelins at David because the glory had left him. Now watch, watch, watch. Please hear this. The temptation... It's to pick the javelin up and throw it back at the ones who are throwing it at you. Now I'm telling you, if David would have picked up that javelin and threw it back at Saul, you would never find the glory attached to David's name. You don't find the glory in it with Rehoboam. You don't find the glory with Jeroboam. But you look up the Bible. You look at the Word of God. When you read about David, you see the glory of the Lord there. Why? Because he allowed his enemies to be haters, but he never became a hater. He never picked up the javelin. He kept his spirit right. He kept his attitude right. Uh, are you hearing? Are you hearing me tonight? I said, Are you hearing me tonight? Let me let me let me move on. Let me move on. You look at you, you look at Jeroboam's church. His worship was competitive worship and is designed to keep the people. Watch. He is worried about the crowd. And you'll read the word of God. It's found in Kings, where there were sodomites in the house of God. There were sodomites in the house of God. Because they were more concerned about performance than they were glory. Now you know as well as I know that when you begin to not be attached to the glory, you allow anything to play. You allow anything. As long as they can sing, man, let them sing. As long, it's getting quiet up in here. But you can never find the glory in that kind of church. I remember. <laughs> yeah, there it is right in your eyes so you can see, you understand. There was a pastor and he had a, he had a, I don't even know, <laughs> he's gay, playing the piano, singing, man, that brother could do it. That evangelist came in, that preacher came in and said, listen, you got to deal with that. You got to deal with that. He said, you want the glory? You got to deal with that. And that pastor, watch what this pastor said. Man, if I deal with that, I'll lose my church. I'll lose my church if I'll deal with that. And that, and that evangelist looked at that pastor and said, brother, you've already lost your church. You've already lost your church. Now I tell you tonight, you ought to thank God for a man of God that will put his ears back and preach without fear and without favor. You ought to thank God for the man in this house, amen, that says we're after the glory. we got to have the glory of the Lord in this church. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Come on, give, give, give God a shout.
The glory of the Lord is coming. The glory of the Lord is coming. It's going to fill the earth. It's going to fill the church. We're going to see the glory of the Lord. It's going to hit the house of God. It's coming. We may see the fire before the glory. There may be a purging. There may be a, a shifting. But kind of before we, before it's all said and done, we're going to see the glory of the Lord. Someone say amen. Can you lift your hands and love God? Let me see if I want to go to this next level or not. Just lift your hands and love God for a moment. Come on, lift your hands and love God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church, listen to me. We're in the last moment, the last hour. The handwriting of God, Jesus, is about to come. And I believe he wants to give us revival. He wants to give us the glory. Amen. But there's some things that need to be burned up. There's some things we need to lay on the altar. There's some attitudes we need to lay on the altar. There's some things in our heart we need to lay on the altar. Why? Because we can have the glory of the Lord. Someone say amen. I just think it's interesting and I'm going to land with this, but I just think it's interesting that the one we're to pattern after is the one who made himself of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. He did miracles and said, Don't tell nobody. He didn't make a name for himself. It was all about the Lord. It was all about the Father, the glory of the Lord. Now, I'm going to say this and let it fall where it falls. But man, before we see the glory, we got to get rid of the superstars. We got to get rid of that desire for the spotlight. And, and I knew what I was preaching. This, this fell on me about, uh, well, when Pastor called me and asked me to come, I got a word. This word was on me. I've been fasting and praying this whole time. I mean, I mean, my wife asked me, she said, are you ready? I said, I know this. I'm prayed up. I've been locked up in the church praying, seeking the Lord. I said, oh, God. Amen. Amen. I wanted to bring a word from the Lord. Hello, somebody. Wanted to bring a word. Wanted to bring a word. And let it fall where it falls. Woo. <laughs> Woo. 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 You say, Pastor, we want an open heaven. Jesus is the example of the open heaven. He made himself a no name, no reputation. He wasn't a superstar. He worked in the shadows. Hello, somebody. Amen. And, 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 and just, and Jesus, you got to help me. Amen. But I remember years ago, I was trying to, you know, pattern after T.D. Jakes. And I, so I started a Z-Par ministry. And, and all my tapes, it was back then, it was cassettes. And so I'm dating myself a little bit on the cassettes. I had the Z and the P and Z-Par ministry. Amen. I was going to do Z-Par ministry. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost said, I don't want you doing Z-Par ministry. I want, you, I want you in the shadows. I want you to, I want you to keep your mouth shut. I want you to stay humble. It's about you. If we're going to put anybody on the billboard, put Jesus. If you're going to advertise anybody, advertise Jesus. If we're going to, if we're going to magnify anybody, magnify Jesus. Magnify. Well, I can't get no help to that. Stand to your feet and give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. <clears throat> John said, I must decrease that he must increase. I must decrease and he must increase. Let that be in the heart of every saint of God tonight. And let it be the heartbeat of our church tonight. Let it be the heartbeat of this region tonight. Is that we're not in competition with one another. We're not trying to set up superstars in the church. Oh no. Let's bring in some, some no name. Let's, 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 just, let's just bring glory to the name of Jesus. Let's bring glory to the name of the Lord. Let's seek the glory of the Lord. So insane. Rise and shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, 
and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Is anybody hearing this preacher tonight? Are you hearing me tonight? The glory's coming. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round right about and see. And all they that gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar off. Revival's coming. That's when the glory hits, revival's coming. The sinner's coming. We're have, when the glory comes, we're going to see a shaking, not in the church, but in the community. Amen. Thou shalt see them flow together. Watch out. And thy heart shall fear. And be enlarged. I'm finished. And because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. He's talking about the blessings, financial blessings. The needs are going to be met. He said camels are coming. The gold is coming. Read the scripture. The flocks are coming. Why? And I will glorify the house of my glory. I will glorify the house of my glory. Oh, he said, where my house is filled with glory, I'm going to glorify that house. I'm going to glorify the house that hosts my glory. Lift your hands and worship Jesus. 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 There's two things that I feel so strong in my spirit. One is competition and the other one is the spirit of division. Please don't, don't be in competition with your brother or your sister. Let the spirit be right. Let your heart be right. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. If they sing and a move the Holy Ghost breaks loose, don't get jealous. Don't be envious. Come on, if, if Pastor Lamonte preaches tomorrow and the glory of the Lord hits, amen, don't be jealous. Don't, no, 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 no. It's the kingdom. It's Jesus. It's about his glory. It's about his glory. It's about his glory. Somebody say amen. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's, let's worship the Lord. 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 I remember the story of a well-known, well-known minister. I could, if I told you his name, everybody would probably know him. He's passed now, going on to be meet his reward but man he had a powerful anointing on his life the glory of the Lord he started a church right in the gates of hell and raised it up and man it is still going today he said as his ministry began to expand people began to call to TBN called and different ones called and wanted him to come and all of a sudden he started going to TBN and he had these big crusades he was doing and had the bus and television and just, he, he was becoming famous. He said he preached a crusade and there was no glory there. He said, God, what's going on? Where's the glory at? And he said at that moment, he quit the TBN. He quit the crusades. He quit the spotlight. He walked away from the spotlight. And he gave himself to prayer and to fasting and simply working in his church. And God kept that anointing and glory on that man till the day he died. I'm talking about Pastor David Wilkerson, a man of God, man used of God. I'm reminded of another preacher that I could call his name. And man, I'm telling you, he was anointed. I mean, anointed. I mean, he preached these, blow your mind. 
blow your mind. And somehow the spotlight came and the fame came and, and I'm not the judge. But I got enough sense to know that there's something different, there's something wrong. When he began to go Hollywood and all that, he lost the glory. He lost the glory. I, I'm reminded of the temptation that the devil gave to Jesus. He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you'll just worship me. I'll make you famous. I'll give you the spotlight. And there's something in all of our hearts that's, that's kind of pulled to that. There's, a, there's kind of, I like that. And In fact, I knew what I was preaching. And, and like I said, it had been on me for several days now. I've been seeking the Lord about it. And, and uh, I thought, okay, I'm ready to go. And then pastor, he posted that picture of me. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. And I thought to myself, here I've been praying. Here I've been seeking the Lord. But there's still things in me that need to die that I can see the glory. And I'm sure I'm not the only one in this place that could say, Lord, there's some things in me Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's self-centeredness. Maybe it's, I don't know, but you know. And my prayer tonight is that there would be a people that would just come and lay it on the altar tonight and say, God, send the fire and let it burn that I can see your glory. I can't do church no more. I can't do three songs no more. I can't do, no, I, we got to have your glory. Somebody lift your hands and love God. I wonder... Oh, I gotta quit, Holy Ghost. This ain't this. Please don't take it like it sounds, because I'm just the mailman. But. Man, we need singers that weep between the porch and the altar. We need preachers that weep between the porch and the altar. We need saints that weep between the, the porch and the altar. Brokenness. Come on, can I get a witness? Saying, Jesus, we need you. There's things in me that need to be burned up because we need your glory. We need your glory. And God, I can't do this. I got to have the fire of the Holy Ghost. I got to... I'm telling you, I want you here. I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. But God wants to do something wonderful in your life, but you got to come by the way of the fire. He's wanting to do something wonderful in your ministry, but you got to come by the way of the fire. You got to come by the way of brokenness. You got to get in the place of the shadow of the Most High. You got to get in the shadow. You got to dwell in the secret place. You got to dwell in the, in the lonely place. Somebody needs to begin to walk up around the front. Amen. If you say, Pastor, this is my word. I want it. I want to see the glory of the Lord. And yes, there's things in me that I need the fire to burn out. Amen. There's some gossip. There's lust. There's perversion. Whatever. Amen. There's pride. There's arrogancy. Whatever it is. But oh God, tonight we're asking for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Because we need the glory. We need the glory. We need the glory. We need the glory. Ela boko shande, la mama ne, la mama niya. Ina yara boko shande, mama niki ano rotonia. Ala moko niya yana mama niya. Hey, hey! You've never been a javelin thrower before. Don't start now. Don't start now. Amen. Don't be a hater now. Amen. You, God's got a glory for you. He's got a glory waiting on you. He's got a glory waiting for you. Somebody reach out. Somebody worship. Hello, call him here. The 
let there be a, a Rachel in the house that says, Lord, give me children lest I die. Give us the glory lest we die. Oh, God, we can't do church no more. 